Meet Jimmy. Jimmy is a great kid, but has some specific health and developmental difficulties. His family met with their doctor to see if they can figure out the cause of his difficulties. The doctor evaluated Jimmy and decided he meets the criteria for a new genetic test called whole exome sequencing. After a long discussion about the pros and cons of testing, Jimmy's family decided to proceed. A blood sample was drawn from Jimmy and sent for this genetic testing. Genetic testing is a way to look at your genes. Not these genes, these genes. To explain how genetic testing is done, let's start at the beginning the very beginning. When a baby is conceived, a single sperm cell fertilizes a single egg cell. The egg contributes half of the necessary genetic material of chromosomes to the baby, and the sperm contributes the other half. This cell with its combined genetic material, or DNA, begins a series of rapid divisions producing billions of cells that differentiate into unique tissues, organs, and body parts. The DNA instructs our cells to develop into different types of tissues. For example, there are heart cells, skin cells, nerve cells, to name just a few. Each cell has a specific job to do, but they also have something in common. Most cells have a nucleus which contains the DNA. The DNA is like an instruction manual that guides how we grow and develop. These instructions are in the form of genes. Our DNA is also called our genome. So the blood sample that was taken from Jimmy contains cells with DNA that can be tested. Our genome contains about three billion base pairs. Base pairs are similar to the letters of the alphabet. The letters of the alphabet are arranged to make words, and base pairs arranged to make genes. The instruction manual, or genome, contains about 25,000 genes. Therefore, each cell of our body has all of these genes or all of our genetic information. Genes can determine physical traits like our hair color, eye color, or how tall or small we may be. But a change or disruption of certain genes can cause specific health problems or increase our risk for disease. To give you an idea how big our genome is, let's compare it to a book. If this book contained all the information that is in our DNA, this book would have about one million pages. If we measured the thickness of this book, it would be about 300 feet thick. That is the same as a 25-story building. That's an enormous amount of information. Genes are made up of many parts, but the exon is a part of the gene that, if altered or changed, can cause a person to develop specific health problems. All the exons together are called the exome. The exome makes up about 1% of our entire genome. This 1% would still represent 10,000 pages of our million-page book. Because Jimmy's family agreed to have him tested, a sample of his blood was sent to the lab for whole exome sequencing. In whole exome sequencing, the exons and the genes are examined closely to see if there are changes or disruptions in the information. A change or mutation in an exon, like a typo that is found in a sentence, may cause a person very specific health problems. Likewise, it is also possible to have a change in a gene that will not cause any health problems at all. In the following examples, let's pretend the single sentence, her hair color is brown, represents the exon portion of a gene, or the area that, if disrupted, can cause specific health issues. So in this first example, spelling color without a U is also correct. The sentence or exon region remains fine. Therefore, the whole exome sequencing result would not explain why the person has specific health problems or no disease causing change was identified. In this second example, sometimes a disruption in a gene provides an explanation for the specific health issues a person may have. Brown is spelled incorrectly. Therefore, the second sentence has a significant typo or an exon is disrupted. The whole exome sequencing result would provide an explanation for the person's specific health problems or a disease-causing change was identified. 
In this third type of result, the examination of the second sentence or exon is difficult to interpret. Her color is brownish. It's not incorrect, but it is unclear what it really means. If this type of change was found in the exon of a gene, the doctors may not know what it means. This is called a result of unclear significance, meaning no clear information can be provided as to why the person being tested has specific health problems. And finally, in this example, the change in the sentence describes an additional feature of the hair that was unexpected. Additional findings in whole exome sequencing may indicate a person has an increased risk that a specific health condition may develop. In some cases, people may choose not to learn about additional findings from the whole exome sequencing results. So when this testing is done, a simple yes or no answer is not always obtained. The result can be very straightforward or very complicated. It is important before deciding to have this testing done to understand this. Finally, even though this testing covers only 1% of the whole genome, this is a huge amount of information, like searching through 10,000 pages in a book one letter at a time. We may not understand everything we read now, but as we get smarter, rereading a person's exome results may reveal other information in the future. Because of the volume of information in the exome, it usually takes some time to get the results. Just like Jimmy and his mom, you would have a chance to talk to your health care provider about the results, and depending on what is found, he or she may recommend you have other testing or see other specialists. Thank you again for watching. We have other videos you may be interested in. Just go to the Center for Genetic Medicine website to learn more.